senior day, I believe, Ryan. It was senior day in Connecticut, and this is it. UConn Huskies win the regular season finale by a score of 88 to 31. Ryan, they finished the regular season. Number seven, 22 and five. Providence falls to 11 and 18. This was another one of your uh, so called, I guess, a general UConn Huskies win that we're so used to seeing, right? Um, you had, uh, you was able to watch the game today. I was not um, a lot to go over. I'm guessing for you on this one, as we wrap up the regular season, I hate to see it go, but again, it's going to get very interesting uh, over the course of the next four or five weeks. Hopefully it lasts that long. Um, let's go ahead and get right down to the scoring box, Ryan, and then we will get your take hard on this episode. Um, it looks like for Providence, um, it was, Janai, uh, Janae Gr uh, Crooms, uh, that led all scores for Providence with 12 points. And then you had uh, Connecticut. Uh, it looks like Kristen Williams. Okay, so AZ Fudd. No, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, Kristen Williams, Ryan, was yeah. 16. Yeah, that's I'm right. just looking right now. Fresh, fresh on the scoreboard, right, uh, on the scorecard. So this was this uh, game was played at the Gamble um, Pavilion. So – yeah, a lot to go over. Paige Becker's the official line for her. Again, she did play. What did she get? 12 minutes in the last game, but now it says 13 minutes. Yeah, and, and that's what Gino said uh, before the game, that he was looking to get Paige around the 15-minute mark. So that's what he did again today. Uh, and she was actually in the starting lineup along with those four seniors uh, on senior day, which were Westbrook, Williams, Juhas, and Nelson Adota. Uh, yeah, Kristen Williams leads with 16. Dorka, she had a double-double. Good game from her, 14 points and 11 rebounds. Uh, AZ had 14 points. Olivia finished with 13. Uh, Paige, she only had two points, but five assists from her. She made some excellent passes in this game today for UConn. And we talked about that before uh, she came back, when she was close to coming back, that she doesn't need to score 25 or 30 points a game and and play 30 minutes as soon as she comes back because UConn, they have a fully healthy team right now. And, you know, that means they have a, a deep bench. This, this team is very deep. They have a lot of good players on this team. Uh, and, you know, everybody's able to save their energy only playing 20 or 25 minutes per game uh, instead of, you know, only ha having five or six players play 30 minutes each. So you can tell uh, the difference from, from you know, Five, only having five or six players from having a fully healthy UConn Huskies team. And it's definitely showed over these past three games, just, you know, these blowout wins, they're always good to see, but it's even better to see just their energy and enthusiasm on the benches and, and on the court for UConn. So it's all coming together. It's really, really good to watch. It was, it was, um, and stay tuned, guys. We'll be back Tuesday, possibly Tuesday morning, uh, to recap the full uh, season, the full regular season, and then take a look at what's to come. I know, Ryan, you told me that uh, possibly it comes down to, and we'll have to just wait, but it comes down to either the eight or nine seeded teams uh, that they will get matched up against in the big, uh, help me out here, Big East. Yeah, Big East tournament. Yeah, I believe we'll have to, we'll have to check on that again to, to be 100% sure, but I'm, I'm almost positive that UConn will play the winner of the eight and nine seed game in the Big East. Uh, so they'll play the winner of that game. Uh, so the, the tournament starts March 4th, so I'm assuming UConn will play March 5th because you know they have a bias since they, they won the tournament. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that that's that's exciting. And uh, you know, it, it was a, an as emotional game uh, today to, to start the game, because like we already said, especially for the seniors on senior day, yeah. uh, and, it, and it took a couple minutes for UConn to, to calm down and and get themselves, um, you know, in, into this this game. But once they did that, they never looked back. UConn went on a 24 to nothing run to end the first quarter. And that's something we've seen for these past couple of games as well. They go on these huge runs. And, you know, that, that's they just make the opponent feel like that there's nothing they can do to get back mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, you know, they just kept it going from there. Uh, easy looks from three-point range in the paint. 
for UConn today. They just make it look so easy. Uh, incredible job also of finding mismatches with uh, Nelson Adota and Aaliyah Edwards inside the paint down low. And also incredible ball movement and it's another outstanding shooting perf performance from UConn today. So it's just going all, all, all right for, for UConn right now. Right now, right now, yes. Um, but when you take a look at the box score, Ryan, I mean, I was really – I think um, I got word that, that yeah, of course, UConn started off missing some shots. I mean, every team, you know, even your number one team, I'm sure South Carolina comes out and, and fires away and misses some shots at the beginning of the game. It's just nerves, right, as you come onto the floor – but again, as we see the Huskies, they settle in and they settle in again and again and again. I just think it's really – I'm not too sure when I take a look, and again, we'll do this on Tuesday, but when I look back at the regular season this year, um, and the only reason why I put in a lot of emphasis on this year because of all the players that Geno had to shuffle in and out of games, the injuries that they had to overcome – what I, again, this is typical UConn women's basketball, putting up 80, 90 points and, and playing tough physical defense. Right, um, yeah. So, so your opponent does not catch up to you, obviously. Um, but again, this has happened. We saw it over the course of eight to 10 years. I understand that. But what I'm trying to tell you is I'm not too sure, and maybe you can decide for me, <laughs> make up your mind for me, I'm not too sure what was more impressive this season, Ryan, was the Huskies scoring 80 or 90. Now, not every game, I understand, but when they put up 80 or 90 on the box score, is that more impressive or was it more impressive to see the kind of numbers that the opponents were scoring against them? And it wasn't much. It was not much. Even during UConn's uh, losses, I mean, teams seem like that they had trouble scoring. So maybe you can make your mind up for me here, but I, I'm just not too sure whether to be more impressed by the offense, basically to break it down, the offense or the defense. It, it is truly amazing. Yeah, it, it truly it, it is. And it's really outstanding what, you know, time and time again, uh, what they're able to do every single game. And that brings me back to this coaching staff and Gino and all the assistant coaches of what they had to do uh, making all these different starting lineups. It was the 10 different starting lineup today for UConn that, that Gino mm -hmm. had. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it, it just is amazing, all the adversity that they had to fight through. Uh, and it, people might say, well, they play in the Big East. There's not a lot of uh, good teams. But it, it doesn't – that you know, that doesn't matter. There's still good – and, you know, they got beat by Villanova uh, and a couple of different teams that played them tough this season in the Big East. So – uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot they had to go through this season for UConn. Definitely nothing that they're, uh, you know, used to going through it at all. You know, five, we've mentioned before five losses uh, hasn't happened since 2002. So uh, just truly incredible what Gino has built here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just seems like, you know, now we, we talked about it before everybody was back healthy. If this mm -hmm. team can get fully healthy before March Madness, we could be in for a treat. And it seems to be heading in that direction so far. That's right, Ryan. And if you can just excuse me here, hopefully uh, you didn't hear anything on your end, did you? No, no. Okay, good. Because I had, well, I, so I'm pulling up the video, uh, our last episode, and they had a ad pop up, an advertisement. And I was hoping that that audio did not get caught on this recording. Um, but you're telling me it didn't. So that's good news. Um, more good news. A lot of people came through on our last episode. And again, we appreciate that. We appreciate your support for UConn women's basketball, especially women's basketball all around. Ryan, we will get about five minutes in of these comments, and then we will head on out. Last time for the regular season. Here we go. Glenn Briggs. And again, this is the video. Uh, UConn Huskies demolished St. John's 93-38, to 38, February 25th. Ryan. Glenn Briggs goes simple and, uh, well, hold on here. Uh, Angelina Jordan, have a listen. Okay, all right, that was Glenn Briggs. Uh, I guess that they were commenting on a specific singer, maybe. So yeah. maybe he 
Yeah, he he was the one that that mentioned that Paige and that singer went to the the same state in, oh, okay. in Minnesota okay. and was right. yeah making. We would take the time yeah. then and listen to that uh, uh, yeah. on our one of our days off. Um, Jamie Centrella, thank you, Jamie, for coming through again. I remember this name uh, is familiar. Ryan, she goes. This team has some ballers. Will the defense shut down that Providence player who put up twenty seven on them last time? See you Sunday. Well, yeah, they did. They sh- to me, they shut every player down on that roster. Yeah, and that player being Crooms, and they certainly did. She only had one uh, shooting attempt, if I remember correctly, in the first half. Uh, and and UConn, they they kind of got out to a, a slow start there in the second half, probably because they already had such a big lead. And Gino, uh, he he went into a zone a couple of different points, and I think they were just trying to test some things out before the Big East tournament. Uh, since they were able to do so, it's such a huge lead. But yeah, uh, just a, another incredible defensive performance along with, with the offense for UConn, but uh, definitely shut everybody down uh, on Providence today. Okay, going over to the next comment uh, from Jest. He goes uh, against Butler, 92 to 47. Against Butler, ninety-two to forty-seven last January twelve. Yeah, I think I think you you asked the question of uh, did they score more than ninety-five points at any time, uh, any other game in the season? Uh, and I said, you know, except the the Arkansas game, but I I missed that one against Butler where they scored uh, ninety-two. So so thank you for uh, correcting me on that and and, and uh, correcting my my mistake on, on that one. And going up to Gay uh, Abrams, redemption for all the losing mentality during this 2022 UConn women's basketball during COVID. These seniors are next level women athletes as pros. Congratulations to all UConn staff impacting championship comparison. E is next level Olympian representing Blue Blood UConn. Yeah, and I mean, just all around from everybody, just being able to turn everything around so quick and everybody adjusting to their roles. Uh, and, and Gino was saying after the game, uh, he was asked, you know, what, what's the ceiling for this team? Uh, and he goes, you know, I guess we'll have to find out after the Big East tournament because uh, it just took, you know, so much for these players to get used to having everybody back on the floor uh, and kind of adjusting to everybody, but it seems like they're, they're doing a fine job so far over these past three games. And the last one, I really like this one a lot. I really like this one a lot. Um, let's go to Aaron Davis to cap it off. Cause I like these kind of comments. Nice and simple, right? I'll be at Gamble for the final regular season game and senior day slash night. So sad to see Williams, Westbrook, and Nelson Adoto say goodbye to stores. Much love. Go Huskies. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also Dorka, too. He didn't mention her uh, because she's a grad tra- transfer. So she opts to – she has another year, so she opts to come back. Uh, she can. So hopefully we'll see her next year, uh, even though she is a senior this year. But, uh, yeah, Kristen Williams, Nelson Adota. And Avina Westbrook, uh, you know, big, big shout out and love to them. Uh, you know, obviously not the last game, but the, the last regular season game for them in, for them in Gamble. Uh, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll make them see a run in this Big East tournament and uh, in, in March Madness as well. So I can't wait for what, for what the future holds for this team. UConn wraps up the regular season finale with a victory. Like always, it seems like. Ryan, congratulations to head coach Gino and the entire coaching staff. Congratulations to the players. Congratulations to Paige Beckers. All of them for making it this far. And, hey, in my opinion, it's only the beginning. I don't know about you. But, again, they roll into the, that's a P word, postseason. That's right, the postseason. A lot on the line, Ryan, as we get set for March Madness. It's Phil and Rye on Listen Up.